Thackeray from Wits Universities. Uh, he is the Institute for Human Evolution Director. Welcome. Nice to talk to you again, Professor. What new light does this research throw onto our evolutionary past? Well, we have more detail on the nature of Australopithecus sediba, which is recognized now as a valid species based on the mandible. Um, there are six papers in science which shed light not only on the, the cranium, the mandible, the teeth, but also the limbs, upper limbs, lower limbs, the thorax, the, the backbone. And what it shows very clearly, to me at least, mm -hmm. is that there is no clear boundary between the genus Australopithecus and Homo. Mm -hmm. You know, more than 10 years ago, people were saying, these are the characters of Australopithecus. These are the characters of Homo. And I was quietly saying, based on fragments of fossils from Stokefontein and elsewhere, that actually there were some specimens which char had characters of both, but we were dealing with fragments. Now we have two skeletons, almost complete skeletons, uh, of a species, Australopithecus sediba, and we're able to look in more, at, in more detail at the nature of these skeletons. We recognize Australopithecus sediba as a valid species, but how it relates to other taxa is a, an open question. I, I know this kind of research is a painstaking process. It, it, it takes a lot of time. At some point, is there a eureka moment here for you, or does it gradually all come together? A eureka moment, yeah. certainly when you find a new fossil and you recognize it as something different. You know, Charles Darwin had the same problem. When he had a eureka moment and recognized distinct species, things were easy when the sample sizes were small. Mm. But as the sample sizes increase, you find that boundaries between the taxa break down. That applied to Charles Darwin's samples of barnacles. We have the same problem now with hominid fossils. And yes, there's a eureka moment when you find an, something really new. Like Raymond Dart describing the Taung child in 1925. It was recognized as a new species, Australopithecus africanus. That was a eureka mm. moment. It confirmed what Charles Darwin had said, that Africa was the cradle of humankind. In the same way, Lee Berger and his team have had a eureka moment in recognizing something distinctly different. But what follows from that is, my goodness, how does this relate to the, the nature of the human family tree? Is it a tree? Is it a bush? Or is it a thicket? <laughs> so what else have you been able to discern? Um, behavioral traits and characteristics, perhaps how it walked, for instance. Yes. That's becoming a lot clearer now, isn't it? Well, not entirely clear, mm. but showing that there are differences. Mm. We can't simply say that Australopithecus was a biped. Mm. We now recognize that there are different forms of bipedalism. In the case of Sediba, probably it wasn't a runner. Um, it, it could walk, mm. but it could walk in a manner that was certainly different mm. from Australopithecus africanus, uh, that foot would have been splayed, yeah. it would have been flat-footed. Um, there are those details which are being picked up by Bernard Zipfel and his colleagues, Jeremy De Silva, in the, showing the manner in which Sediba would have walked. It would have been walking in a manner different from Australopith Australopithecus africanus, or for that matter, early Homo, um, but it would also have been arboreal to some extent. It would have been climbing in the trees. Um, we recognize that from the upper limb. Mm. Just a final one, very quickly. It seems to me that the research coming from your institution uh, appears to be accelerating a pace. Is, is there a reason for that? Absolutely. You know, we're very proud. Wits mm. University is proud of the productivity, especially within the last five years. The number of papers per year is increasing. We've been able to publish in high-impact journals. Mm. This is uh, applicable to Ron Clark, who's worked on Littlefoot. It's applied to, to, to Lee Berger and his team. We're very proud of the increasing productivity, and we're really grateful to government for supporting paleontology. Mm. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, absolutely fascinating. Professor Francis Thackeray with us here on Newsnight. Bits University's Institute for Human Evolution.